But yeah, ironically, like all the people complaining about this aren't people who are going to watch the Transgender Olympics either. Uh, it's, it's not like those are people who care so much about the sports that they're going to watch all categories, etc. Which is another can of worms. Okay. Next video. Does every, every gender have a flag for real? I'm pretty sure they do, Joe yeah. Rogan, all the way to news sources like Vice talk about the issue of transgender athletes competing in the female division. And then a few months ago, USA Powerlifting specifically was in the news and got more media attention than it ever has in the existence probably of our whole sport uh, because USA Powerlifting said no. They do not allow, not only do they not allow male to female transgender competitors, but they do not allow any transgender competitors with exogenous hormones. And before I begin, I also want to say that if you're not familiar, my name is Johnny Candido. I've been competing in the USAPL since 2011. So I'm definitely coming at this from the perspective of someone who cares about this powerlifting federation first. And any other biases and motivations are far secondary. I also want to get to a few facts before we begin with our special guest. So the first one is that there is no case, right now there's not a single case, of a transgender powerlifter dominating. And this is really important because a lot of media outlets have incorrectly said this. And the reason being is that powerlifting is such a small sport with so many categories that someone can win the M1 division, which is 40 to 49 years old, in their state and be the only competitor. That is extremely common. And in fact, the only two cases that have really gotten attention lately with this transgender issue competing in the female division, you can just look up the wilts of those lifters. And if their wilts isn't around 500, then it's not a dominant performance. And when I say look up the wilts, I specifically mean go to open powerlifting and then type in their name. That is the I don't know what a wilt is. It's completely comprehensive. So just about every single powerlifter that exists will be on there. What's really ironic about this is there is a journalist who is a Harvard grad who writes for Quillette uh, who tweeted, imagine Dominic. Disclaimer, I've not seen this video, but Candito generally has a pretty good head on his shoulders, and this is an interview with someone who's close to the decision-making of their league. Okay, interesting. There what? Yeah, I, okay, let's check so we at least know what we're talking about. Uh, what is a Wilk powerlifting? The Wilk's coefficient, or Wilk's formula, is a mathematical coefficient that can be used to measure the relative strengths of powerlifters despite the different weight classes of the lifters. Robert Wilkes, CEO of Powerlifting Australia, is the author of the formula. What the fuck? Okay. Cool. Dating like this, basically in your first or second meet. And the most ironic part is that my Wilkes score was literally higher than that my first Nationals meet in 2011 as a teenager. It's incredibly frustrating because this had around four to 5,000 retweets. And when I personal messaged this person, he said, oh yeah, I just didn't put that much thought into it. It was just a one-off tweet. Bruh. Now, this isn't to say it's impossible or that then it's not a worry just because it hasn't happened yet. It's just simply a fact that it hasn't. In other sports, there have been some cases that it hasn't happened. Wait, wait, what? Message this person, he said, oh, yeah, I just didn't put that much thought into it. It was just a one-off tweet. There are mm, this lifts for the raw data. For some perspective, there are multiple women now squatting 200 plus pounds over mm, Amanda Lawrence and Daniela Mello being two of the most well-known. Bank, I know nothing about it. For some reason, everyone retweeted an off-the-cuff tweet I made about it. Nice. Now, this isn't to say it's impossible or that then it's not a worry just because it hasn't happened yet. It's just simply a fact that it hasn't. In other sports, there have been some cases that are a little bit more debatable. For example, Laurel Hubbard in weightlifting. And then also recently in track and field, there was a hurdler named CC Tamar who just won the Division II National Championship and before was ranked 200th to 300th the previous two years as a man. The hurdles go from 36 inches to 30 inches. I could so masturbate, the and I could be in pain, a lot of these and rules like, very breathing, specific. like spitting so my lungs out. to the burden of proof. So for example, when it comes to volleyball players in the IOC, you can be a male to female transgender athlete competing with women. And of course, there still is going to be that roughly five inch height difference on average which will bring you closer to the average height of an elite volleyball player. Okay, so the second fact that is not debatable, regardless of what your take is on this issue, is that the USAPL does not allow for TRT. This is a very important issue because not a lot of people know this. Even people who talk to me who are involved in the sport, they think TRT is allowed because it commonly is. It, under IOC rules, there are exceptions for TRT, but in the USAPL, there is not. 
I need to get the terms right. TRT is testosterone replacement therapy. Okay, yeah. And uh, sorry, I need to go back. I, I have trouble hearing uh, what he's saying, actually. Uh, he, he's recording, and I think this is not a green screen. Or no, it probably is a green screen. I, it sounds like he's recording from inside, like, a fucking huge hall. The, the reverb makes it hard to hear him. In weightlifting. Probably. And then also recently in track and field, there was a hurdler named CC Tamar, who just won the Division II National Championship and before was ranked 200th to 300th the previous two years as a man. The hurdles go from 36 inches to 30 inches, so the height difference can play a big role. A lot of these rules aren't very domain specific, so this is relevant to the burden of proof. So for example, when it comes to volleyball players in the IOC, you can be a male to female transgender athlete competing with women, and of course there still is going to be that roughly five inch height difference on average which will bring you closer to the average height of an elite volleyball player. Okay, so the second fact that is not debatable, regardless of what your take is on this issue, is that the USAPL does not allow for TRT. This is a very important issue because not a lot of people know this. Even people who talk to me who are involved in the sport, they think TRT is allowed because it commonly is. It, under IOC rules, there are exceptions for TRT, but in the USAPL, there is not. And again, this connects back to the principles. Because if they did allow for TRT, but then, for example, with uh, female to male transitions, they don't allow for those transgender athletes to compete with men simply because it's exogenous on principle, even if they don't necessarily have an advantage. It's really important to understand the context with their, what they're working with and if they are consistent. So for the sake of this one area... Okay. Uh, this guy seems to really like actually know what we're talking about. He's talking about exogenous versus endogenous testosterone. I'm enjoying this discourse already much more than the previous duder, the previous gym bro. Yeah, this might be a better. This might be a better one, honestly. Yeah, they are. The third fact to get out the way is that the USA. Oh. APL has a different policy than the IPF, even though the USAPL is an affiliate to the IPF. So for those who are unfamiliar with powerlifting, if you win nationals in the USAPL, you qualify for the world meet in the IPF. And yet, given that, you can still have different rules for each federation, which I know it gets a little bit confusing. But the IPF defers to IOC guidelines, and the IOC and NCAA both do allow for transgender competitors to compete in either division, male to female or female to male, as long as there's a 12-month period and there are certain criteria met. So it's a key difference to understand that the USAPL and IPF are not eye to eye on this, even though they do feed into each other. All right, there seems to be a Very lot of video because we complexities. Have the of TUE for the USAPL. He's also a medical doctor. His name is Chris Hunt. So whether you agree or disagree on this topic, I think he's definitely worth listening to and his words carry weight within the Federation. So without further ado, I'll let Chris take over. First of all, thanks, Johnny, for having me on um, on your video. It's really great to be on your YouTube channel and to be able to talk about this issue because I think this is an important issue and it's obviously a hot button issue, not only in the media, um, Federation but Planet, for sorry. equality concerns. And in fact, it ties into current political issues um, with the Equality Act that was just passed by, by Congress. And it's actually going to be going into the Senate in short order. What is the evidence for the IOC transgender policy? Where was it from? So the current evidence By the way. for the IOC guidelines are somewhat slim. The IOC Ooh. basically made this decision as... 2019 uh, as well, okay. As kind of a way to get in tune with what's going on in society currently, but didn't necessarily look at the science in depth. So the current IOC guidelines are actually mostly based off a, a series of two studies from Joanna Harper, um, who is a trans woman and is a part of this com committee. The first study- Harper, who is quoted in this article, we've, we've seen her name uh, be brought up, just saying. Actually did not look at elite, elite athletes. And so then that concern was brought up and she did a rectifying study. Uh, that looked at elite athletes that were involved with cycling and running over four sports. The four sports included only eight athletes, and so the sample size was very small. There were no descriptive statistics run whatsoever. Um, so basically they didn't look at any stats, any p-values, nothing. It was mostly a qualitative look at the data, 
and they determined that there was a trend for people's running times and cycling times to decrease after the process of transition from male to female. Um, but they didn't necessarily know what that trend meant statistically and what the impact is compared to other XX females. Once testosterone is implemented into the body, um, that effect never goes away. We know this from animal studies. So if you take animals and take one group and give them basically nothing and then exercise them and then compare the same group of, it's essentially mice, and you exercise them and give them testosterone, which wasn't in their body, the differences are very large between the two groups, which I think we all kind of know. But then if you take the testosterone away and then exercise the animals again, the differences between the control group and the testosterone that was previously given group is actually still very statistically different. And so what that essentially means is that once you acquire a muscle cell, it's permanent. And I think that we know this from the steroid abusers. People get around the steroid tests all the time. Uh, it, it's an unfortunate fact of life. It's, uh, it's unfortunate for our sport in general. Um, but people try to time their steroid abuse with the drug test and and essentially what they're trying to do is maximize the amount of muscle growth that they get before the drug test and then try this is consistent with what with what i've heard about steroid abuse it's all like he's saying it's all about timing and there's nothing uh, there's no tools in the in the sports community to to deal with it try to have their urine test be clean right but still have all of the benefit of that training well, a similar argument could be made from the process of a trans woman then becoming a woman and trying to compete in the female category. It's not intentional like the, the case with the steroid abuser, but the fact of the matter remains that a trans woman having gone through any degree of male puberty would have still conferred that immutable com competitive advantage, unfortunately. What do you think about a transgender Olympics? Like how you have Paralympics to accommodate for disabled people? Uh, the problem is um, what we see with niche categories with sports is that they become terribly, terribly uh, unpopular. Um, and in general, it's it's like about viability. A, a sport, a sport in and of itself, would need to be super popular to support uh, like a transgender category. Uh, on top of uh, on top of the like uh, men's and women's category, uh, and and especially if you add another so layer of separation like male to female and female to male, which also would seem fair, uh, you add you further reduce the people who will actually care about the sport and the money that will be in the sport, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that that doesn't really work that well. Um, like the idea of making like fi finer categories. Um, there, are, it might work for some sports that are really popular, but uh, there, there are issues with the, with those kinds of approaches as well. Well, and even within UFC, if you get caught, you can end up coming back down the line with all the benefits from the abuse of roids in the first place. Yeah, if people don't care about it, why force it? Because people seem to think, I mean, that's what we're addressing. People seem to think that when um, that if uh, if someone was assigned male at birth and then transition and then compete against other women uh, as a trans woman, Get uh, if they have uh, an advantage from having been, um, been assigned male at birth, that uh, that would be unfair to the other women competing. So we're basically trying to like investigate how, um, how actually true that is. What, 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 what are the different perspectives? Uh, does the science su support that? No, I mean, separating it. Oh, because well, if you separate in, into categories, then you then you uh, then there's no longer the fairness. Uh, you can no longer bring up the fairness criticism. It's a solution to the fairness cri critique, but it's not a viable solution. But yeah, ironically, like all the people complaining about this aren't people who are going to watch the transgender Olympics either. Uh, it's, it's not like those are people who care so much about the sports that they're gonna they're gonna watch all categories etc which is another can of worms but I don't see the issue if people don't want to watch the transgender Olympics 
Well, the issue is that they're just not going to exist if they if no one wants to watch them. I'm from a purely just capitalist. Uh, those events are made to make money to attract viewers perspective. They just uh, just doesn't make sense as a category if not enough people want to watch it. The women's NBA exists. You're wrong. I. Yes, you... I Okay, I don't know if you just showed up or if you listened to my uh, entirely what I was saying, but uh, that, yes, you destroyed everything I was saying. Good job, dude. So force them to watch it? I mean, that's... That's not how how it works, though. To a certain... Maybe to a certain extent, you could, you could like, get people used to watching it, but I don't know, like, the... the, the women's categories in, in sports generally are already much less popular than the men's categories so it's a uh, it's a rough one i'm not saying it's impossible but it's it's not a solution that works for uh for all sports at the very least it all i'm saying is it would only work for the most popular ones what we did is which by the way Roland's thought Yes, the NBA, the basketball is a really, really popular sport. So yes, it makes sense to that the women's, the women's side is like really popular. Anyways, that part was sarcastic. Sorry, I assumed it would carry over. Fucking text, man. Yeah, no worries. Well, and for a lot of people, it's essentially like a pseudo containment event. What it solves for fairness, uh, probably furthers the divisions and acceptance. It's the meme where you're surrounded by rakes and you keep walking into all of them. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, creating more containment events is is not good for uh, for integration. And yeah, nine hundred nine and ninety. Um, you 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 got timed out for this, okay? I think there's a way to market it. Maybe you could have have it to group it together with the Paralympics. I mean, the Paralympics still are really unpopular. Um, also, trans athletes are still a really rare thing too. I, I don't, I don't even know if there's enough trans athletes out there to to actually, yeah, the, like the optics are terrible. I was, I was gonna get there, sign. Uh, I, I don't even know if there's enough trans athletes to like even have like a trans Olympics. But yeah, the, then think about the optics. Uh, you're go, you're gonna go ahead and tell like LGBTQ organizations, hey guys, we got the solution. We're gonna we're gonna have an Olympic event for for you guys, and we're gonna have you next to the next to the Paralympics, where with, with like the other people no one cares about. Which I'm sorry to put it so harshly, but very few people care about the Paralympics, and it's it's a sad reality of the like the state of the the sports, but. Yeah, it's, it then becomes the not normal Olympics. I don't even care about the regular Olympics. Based. Look at the international data for the IPF, and we looked at what. Okay, I'm gonna go back because I missed. The, I I don't remember where we were at in the video. From the process of a trans woman then becoming a woman and trying to compete in the female category, it's not intentional, like the the case with the steroid abuser. But the fact of the matter remains that a trans woman, having gone through any degree of male puberty, would have still conferred that immutable com competitive advantage, unfortunately. What we did is look at the international data for the IPF. And we looked at what is the difference between an XX and an XY person. We found it to be 64%. That's substantial. And so we looked at the existing data from other powerlifting journals, other powerlifting studies that showed that the advantage conferred by steroids is 10%, okay? We also looked at several other studies that demonstrated the advantage, the disadvantage of an anti-androgen, and that showed to be about 10%, right? So steroids plus 10%, anti-androgen minus 10%. And so through the process of transition, if you're using the minimum IOC guidelines, then you've got a net negative 10% advantage on your total. So you're taking that 64% advantage and only decreasing it by 10%. That's not a lot. And so you're taking, if a woman that were XX taking steroids, their advantage would be 10%. And thus, 
if you're comparing even a, a XX woman on steroids to a trans woman, a, a XX person would theoretically have to take a steroid that would confer a five times advantage of that which would be conferred by steroids alone. And so we place a lot of emphasis on what's the effect of steroids. Well, the effect of having had XY puberty is about 64% of that over an XX puberty person. And an X... I would be very curious in seeing the data of um, individuals with the... Um, where was it? androgen receptor mutations in in this sport um because he the, the this, per, this person is, keeps coming back to the xx versus xy thing um and as we saw with the androgen receptor mutations that's not necessarily um that's not necessarily what determines whether someone's uh femme presenting or or male presenting either that being said i do think it's very interesting um to see this from the perspective of uh, like a pure strength sport, the the sexual dimorphism in powerlifting seems to be like the absolute. Like it's probably one of the sports where the there will be the most sexual dimorphism um, than uh, than in, compared to any other sport. Logically speaking, it's the most strength based sport, right? I think he's more trying to use it as a shorthand for uh, uh, assigned male at birth and assigned female at birth. Uh, probably, but the um, probably, but I still think it's a, it's uh, interesting if the if the data doesn't take in it, take it into account what what uh, how that would play into it. But maybe it, it does take in, that into account. All mathematicians are bastards. Um, Hey, could you bring on a cis female NCAA swimmer? Thanks. I would love to have people in the industry to talk to, but I don't. It's a fucking 20 viewer Twitch channel. Who, who, the, who the fuck do you think I am? Um, the more blunt interpretation is people that have physical limitation being paired with people that are just transitioning. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go into sleep. Stay safe from pointless paragraphs. All right, see you, damn done it. All right, let's listen to what he's talking about. Why a person having transitioned, that effect is about fivefold of what they would have from having taken steroids. I don't know any, but it would be fire. I'm, I would welcome it too. Yeah, um, I would be very interested to say you have athletes uh, like. But not just like a, 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 a cis woman's uh, a, a cis woman athlete's perspective, but also trans women athletes' perspectives, and I would I would mostly mostly be interested in honestly would be in talking to the researchers uh, in this article. Uh, I I would love to talk to Richard Holt. I would love to talk to um, where is she uh, Harper? I I don't remember if we see her entire name. I'd love to talk to Katrina Karkazis. I would love to talk to uh, Joanna Harper. Uh, all those people that uh, whose research focuses on the subject, e even more than talking to the athletes, honestly. Because um, personally, I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not much like of a sports person. Um, I'm more of a science nerd, and I kind of want to come at it more from like a rational, what does the science tell us uh, perspective, and then talk to the athletes to try to uh, connect the two. Um, because it, it gets weird. Like, I really appreciate this guy's candor about uh, steroids, for example, that he's like, yeah, everyone's going to be using steroids and they're going to be reaping the benefits from them. They're just going to uh, stop using them when they need to get blood tested. And it's like, oh, well, okay. At, at least we're being honest about what's happening instead of being like, it, it's uh, like transitioning is doping. He's like, okay, everyone dopes, but steroids only give 10% advantage. So actually, being um, being assigned male at birth is a much bigger advantage than the steroids. So uh, like, he's actually presenting an honest argument. I, I really appreciate the way um, this guy's uh, explaining things. 
which is neither, neither here nor there, but I, I feel like I need to say that. So the issue with trans women that I didn't emphasize, I think enough, was the fact that spironolactone is a masking agent for steroids in the drug assay. And so with the work of our pharmacist that's on our TUE committee, um, we've determined that essentially greater than five half-lives to let spironolactone clear out is about five days. So our protocol is to require individuals on spironolactone to hold the drug for five days before a meet or any potential drug test. Usually it's just before a meet. So if we have that's a trans really woman interesting, in actually female category, then we have that person holding their medicine, spironolactone, which is an anti-androgen for five days, you know, in theory, their testosterone levels are gonna back, bounce back at least to some substantial degree, right? That's the reason we're having them hold the medicine in the first place is because the medicine washes out. So, you know, there's a lot of theoretical advantages to that. Hey, Spaniard. The other piece of that is if we don't require trans women to withhold spironolactone, then they're going to, we're essentially bypassing everybody else and allowing them to have a medicine that could potentially mask everything in the drug assay for steroids. Yeah, it is a very hot topic. So currently um, we're looking at publishing I hope to do justice. Um, so we're looking at publishing the data for athletes that have taken spironolactone um, through USAPL. Um, we've actually got to go. Sp spirin uh, what type of justice? Well, the justice of uh, um, of properly covering the topic. Uh, it's a, like an expression, you know, to, to do something justice is to cover it or discuss it in a fair and uh, transparent way. What side am I leaning on? I don't know. I, I, I don't really, I haven't really made up my mind. Um, it's a complicated topic. Uh, one, one thing I can definitely say is that having looked at, uh, at a, lot, a lot of research about testosterone, uh, like you can see it in, in my stream title, testosterone is not a measure of performance. Um, like I definitely know one thing is that I disagree. Uh, I 100% disagree with the, at this point, with the um, uh, International Association of Athletics Federations and International Olympic Committee hard limits on the amount of testosterone women are allowed to have in their bloodstream. Um, that's, that's one thing that's pretty easy to say is bad after reading the research. Uh, like, people, people who know about it criticize this decision. Uh, like, I'm not an expert on the field. I'm just, I'm just citing the different experts I've been listening to today and reading about. Um, which, like, th this, this decision is bad. Now, about the fairness of trans women competing with cis women, it's complicated. It, it depends on the sports, first off. It, it, it genuinely de depends on the sports. Uh, some sport, in some sports, it's, it's uh, probably a non-issue. Whereas in other sports, like right now, we're listening to someone talk about the, the, uh, this question in powerlifting, which is probably the sport where it's, it's, uh, the sexual dimorphism will be the biggest. It's like raw strength. So th this is like the, the part of the topic where uh, absolutely like, uh, m anyways, yeah. I haven't seen a single trans man in the biological, uh, in, uh, in the cis men's sport category yet. Yeah, the, the thing with Leah Thomas, though, is uh, she's, her, her accomplishments are very misrepresented. Uh, something people haven't been talking about enough. Um, I, I'm sure you've seen the meme of like, Leah Thomas was ranked 460th when, uh, when she competed uh, against men, and then ranked first uh, when she competed against uh, women. Except... It's not a fair. It's not a fair presentation of her performance. Uh, in 2018, before Leah Thomas started transitioning, we learned earlier, uh, she uh, she was consistently top eight in uh, in the uh, in the same Ivy League competitions we're talking about here. 
uh, competing against uh, men. She was like a top eight uh, men's category swimmer. No, she was she wasn't in the four hundreds. Uh, let me let me finish explaining. She was a top eight uh, contender in in the men's in men's sports until she started transitioning. However, the rules state that she needs to go undergo transition for uh, over a year before she can move to the women's category. And being uh, being uh, uh, an athlete, she didn't want to stop competing, so she continued to swim in the men's category while transitioning. And that is why she ranked so badly in 2019. In 2018, before she started transitioning, she was a top eight contender. And uh, I mean top eight because it was a, 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 across different across different um, um, across different uh, what are you calling across different uh, categories. But she had like some top three finishes uh, in there. I don't remember the exact ranks. Gotta say, Ivy League is not a great swimming conference. I'm pretty sure. I need to double check what the NCA actually is. Oops. National Collegiate Athletic Association. So it's still college level. That's what I thought. I we're still talking about NCA ra rankings. So wasn't even a year of transition. Well, yes, because if it was a year of transition, she would be competing against women. The HRT would not have done any difference. It did. Her times, her times once she's transitioning are 30 seconds worse than when she was, uh, she, when she was biologically male. The big swimming universities are Texas, Florida, California, Stanford, etc. Okay, so she wasn't competing against those, uh, you mean, when she was in, uh, in the Ivy League uh, competition? In the Ivy League championships. And that 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 might be a fair that might be a fair remark. I guess we could look at like how her times compare to um to like the uh, the big swimming universities. Let's see. February two thousand eighteen Ivy League swimming championship. I just want the results, dude. Like the full table. I was just control F Thomas. Uh, pretty sure Zach Thomas was not her dead name. Pretty sure it wasn't Zach. Michael Phelps doesn't support this. He believes it's unfair. Michael Phelps has a genetic mutation that makes him insanely uh, advantaged compared to anyone else, by the way. Like, the, the, the question of fairness in the high-level sports is a bit more nuanced than, uh, than that. But it, 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 there is... I, uh, and when I say nuance, I don't mean you're wrong. Like, there, there is... There is an understandable sentiment of unfairness. Okay, maybe if I just directly Google Leah Thomas's results for something. Uh, what was her dead name? I'm sorry, I, I, I wouldn't normally be looking for a dead name like this, but it's just uh, to find the stats in the... Like her times in, um, in 2018. The birth name of Leah Catherine Thomas is William Will Thomas. Okay, thank you. And Michael Phelps has his say on the subject as much as like any other athlete, but at the end of the day, the I, I, I think what needs to be done is like a better understanding of the um, of the biology. It has to come from it has to be informed by athletics, but it has to be more of a scientific approach. You should be able to look up national rankings of all swimmers for particular events in the NCAA. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. I it was, she was breaking records in pool records in uh in 2018 okay let's look at this top times 
Um, and then what were you talking about? NCAA 2018. Let's see, 500 yard freestyle times. Oh, those are women's records. So, 418. That is definitely not like uh, top. That is definitely not like top uh, top of the country category, 418. Well, this is in 2021, but we can assume that, yeah. All time fastest swim at the event, four, 406. Looking at the seeds and prelims, the um, like we're we're still looking at something that's need the year two thousand eighteen. Ah, right, we can look at two thousand twenty one. Come on, it doesn't have to be. Uh, if anything, two thousand twenty one is it looks it looks worse for uh, is like worse because times usually get better over time. But sure, we can try to find the uh, two thousand eighteen. Right, this is just gonna be records though. Iron yard free freestyle 408, 200 yard freestyle 129. Um, what was the last thousand yard freestyle 855 versus 833, 1650 yard freestyle 454 versus 422, 200 IM. Individual medley, two, 139, 156. 400 individual medley was 432. All right, definitely not a good individual medley athlete. Yeah, and he, was, he definitely wasn't a record breaker. That being said, in 2000, now let's try to find the, like, the full 2018 data. This is 2021. You're right, you don't need the year, but you should be able to see the rankings of all NCAA swimmers for year 2021. Yeah, which I can't, I can't seem to find. I don't know if it's on the NCAA website or something. Maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe I should just go directly on the website. Oh, it's FS for file system. www.nca.org. I mean, the year does matter because sports, uh, sports generally do get uh, better and better records year over year. So it's better not to um, not to compare years that are far apart. It's unfair to whoever is uh, in an older year. But if it's like two or three years apart, it usually doesn't matter. Our championships, I guess. I don't know where to start looking on this website. Honestly, this entire conversation just makes me sad how people will speak with such authority based on only a little bit of knowledge. It's obviously not contained to this topic, but overall, man, that, that stuff really dooms me out. Yeah. All right, let's just Google. Uh, let's just search. Um, like swimmer rankings. May 2018. Yeah. Good one. It's a huge topic due to being on a professional competitive level. It means a lot. Yeah. I, it does. Th there, there is a bit of a hypocrisy in it where people... Like... All the people who care about it right now, not all, but a lot of the people who care about it right now will go straight back to never watching women's category sports. Um, but that doesn't uh, change the fact that, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's being done on a, on a professional competitive level and it's, it does mean a lot. 
Man, I want to see further, because, like... So if we compare it to 2012 times, I mean, 2021 times, uh, Will Thomas's 418, um, or Leah Thomas's 418 record, would have resulted in, um, well, not being in the top 16. But she, de I, I, she definitely wouldn't have been like 400th. But it would be nice to, oh, there we go, 2018 results. There we go. Oh, this doesn't help at all. Oh, full results. Nice. We're doing it. Okay, 800 yard freestyle. We don't care. Okay, 200 yard freestyle relay. No, it was not a relay, right? It's just normal freestyle. Okay, 500 yard freestyle. Yeah. Oh, that's... What? Oh, yeah, it starts here. Okay, I was misreading it. This is not 400th ranking. Like, a 418 time would have been, like, top 20, top 30-ish. We, we don't have the full results, but definitely not top eight. That is fair. But it's not, it's not this crazy rise from 400th to first. It's she had the level of like a top 30, let's say, athlete at, at that at that competition level. In the men's category, she she didn't magically rise up from four hundredth to to first. So, and this characterization this characterization uh, is fucked up. Honestly, I think many of the people that care the most are parents of high school or college girls that compete in sports. No, I uh, yeah, having having your daughter compete is probably the best way to get you to care. Yeah. And there are people who like gen just genuinely love the sports and don't care if it's uh, if it's women or men competing or and whatnot. I'm just being cynical about the the reality that a lot of people don't don't care about the um, uh, anything other than the men's categories. I'm not saying trans athletes shouldn't compete. I just think it should be put on a freeze until further analysis and prerequisites are in some sort of rules. But uh, cis men and cis women have rules to follow. Yeah. Well. I admit I don't care. That's that's also a first stance. I like sports, let's be honest. Men aren't equal to to women when it comes to sports. Not even some men are comparable to others. Well, that's the problem as well. The, the this is a like on the other side of the argument we we accept all sorts of um, all sorts of inequalities and advantages and disadvantages. Uh, earlier, Michael Phelps was quoted. Uh, Michael Phelps has has like a biological advantage that no one, pretty much no one else in the world has. Uh, should he be in his own category? <laughs> Probably not. Um, the and and then goes back to the problem that uh, a, a lot of people. A lot of people see um, transness as a choice, whether they realize it or not. Because when it's a choice, then you can think about doping or not. And then there is the subtlety that, uh, to a certain extent, if the, stig if the stigmatization of being trans gets lower, maybe in some future there will be people who will actually uh, do that, who will like, abuse, abuse different... Um, 
uh, abuse different rules uh, and and subtleties about the rulings in order to get away with doping under under the guise of having transitioned. Uh, at the moment, I think it's it's like that's not the discourse, and I like you'd have to be weird to to accuse people of doing that. Uh, but there is a f discourse about the fairness uh, still of the competition, which is a fair point to bring up. Uh, rules say don't be a dick, but just wondering if that is unconscious sexism. Um, don't worry about it. I like dicks too. Uh, that that took me a, a few seconds to process. <laughs> I agree, bad name, man. Uh, what I wanted to say... Yeah, so, like... I I'm glad you brought it up, Larry. Uh, are, are you from Rhode Island, by the way? Is the Larry R.I. from Rhode Island? Uh, anyways, because I'm, I'm from R R Rhode Island as well. Uh, I don't live there anymore, and haven't lived there since I was five years old, but still. Um... I'm glad you brought it up, because th this is a good thing. It's good to have looked at the actual numbers to like have be able to address the exact the exact point you made. Oh shit, we can see exactly where Leah Thomas would have uh, would have ranked here. Is this the full rankings? Yeah, so like this is in the preliminaries. It would have been 41872. Okay. 30 she would have been 39th. I found this uh, during the last season. Thomas competed as a member of the Penn men's uh, team. Uh, yes, but, but the the thing I was bringing up, uh, which you kind of dismissed offhandedly, but which I think is very important to remember, is she was already transitioning during uh, during the that the season when people are quoting the five hundredth um, result. She was already transitioning and and uh, was performing much worse than well than she did uh, when competing as a cis as a cis male. Numbers want to give me yours. Rhode Island, yes, but which road does you live on? <laughs> if a female athlete who hasn't fully transitioned yet competes in male sports, should they have to wear a bra or not for TV? Asking asking the real questions here, viable clan member. Testosterone is a measure of performance along with other factors, but it is a measure. It's more complicated than that. I I, I put in the clickbait title, but um I, I'm not gonna go over the whole article again, but if, if you if you wanna if you wanna check it out, I, I highly recommend you ch you read the you check out this article. I oops. Hey, let me this article I've been reading earlier, um, which it's not that testosterone it's not that testosterone doesn't have an effect on performance, but first off, there's a huge difference between exogenous and endogenous uh, testosterone, and for endogenous testosterone, it's not clear cut. Uh, there are other more important factors at work when it comes to your performance than the uh, than the testosterone level. So some some of the, some of the biggest issues are, for example, that the uh, some of the highest performing male athletes have a much lower testosterone than than like the limits fixed by the athletic committee. Uh, if testosterone was like the most important factor, then they would not be such successful athletes. Uh, like there, there's there's a few there are several like glaring contradictions with the hypothesis that testosterone is the be all end all uh, determinant determinant for performance. All right, so if that's the transitional point, are there medical facts to say when the muscular fibers and lung capacity get smaller at what percent and timeline? Um, so I haven't yet gone to specific into specific research about how the. Um, uh, muscle mass and lung capacity changes, but uh, this guy brings up a, a very, very fair point, is that 
um, a, a lot of the gains that you will have have had from when you were um, a cis male will stay with you, even even through transition. Um, it, it, my understanding is that there there is a lot of those gains do remain. You lose a lot of performance, but you still retain um, you still retain a lot of gains. It, it depends on the sports as well. It, it really depends on the sports, but uh, yeah. It's uh, it, it still is an advantage. There, I, 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 I uh, as far as I can tell, I, I cannot deny that. Uh, is there equality when it comes to transgenderism? Like, is there equal women becoming men, or is it skewed? Uh, my understanding, last time I looked at it, uh, it was a lot more um, the, uh, men, uh, men becoming women than than women becoming men. Why are we trying to equal everything to one another? I mean, fish deserves to equal pigeons. What? More important being the Weasley uh, word people looking to disagree with you. They'll just lean into the fact that it comes across as you just as you don't accept it's a factor. Doesn't hurt to bite the tiny bullet that it is one factor. Top three tips to be a top debater. No, yeah, you're right. You're right. I I I I need to I like that. I'm kind of playing modern Bailey with my stream title. Like my stream title is like testosterone is not a measure of important of of performance. And then I'm like, no, it 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 does probably matter in performance, but it matters far less than other factors that we don't fully understand yet. Could we not bundle the transgender athletes into the Special Olympics? Oh, uh, someone suggested that earlier. Uh, uh, there's you. I you think you're memeing? Like you already know what are the problems with that. Why more men to women? Any study on this? I don't know. I, I have not seen any. I have not seen a study trying to explore the why of, of that. If you find one, I'd be interested. That's an interesting topic too. Back through, and we're looking at whether or not we need to use an institutional review board to look at that data. The second piece is the data that I demonstrated pretty clearly in the national governing body meeting, and that is the IPF data. Um, and that's the 17,000 athlete data, essentially, that we looked at. And so basically that data, long, the end of the story shows that that data shows with very good statistical significance that the difference between a male XY person and a female XX person is about 64% on their total. The third study that um, we're looking at publishing is actually essentially a, a review article. And this is a collaboration through many, many scientists. And in fact, most of the studies I've uh, collaborated out with uh, Joe Marksteiner for statistics, and then actually uh, a chemist who runs a lot of ANOVAs in his everyday practice of chemistry. Um, and then another biostatistician who request to be unnamed because he's in a hostile country currently. But so um, we've collaborated with many, many scientists as well, besides statisticians, including a, an individual that has an MD, PhD, and uh, has a micro specialty essentially in the androgens. Well, thanks, Johnny, for your time. Um, if you guys have any more questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll respond to them. How well can trans men compete, by the way? Uh, I have not ever heard of a. Um, I have not yet heard of a trans man um, competing at like a top level. For the title, it's whatever. But you just said even in the nuanced response that it still comes across that you're not willing to bite the tiny bullet from the perspective of someone who will just end up focusing on that part. So basically, just be yeah, yeah, it's a factor, and then give the nuanced response. Easy. Fair enough. I'll remember that sign. Thank you. Trans men truly are men because nobody cares about them either. <laughs> oh no. Squad W. Sorry, I meant uh, the, all the men category would be called trans men and the women category would be trans women. Yeah, we, we talked about that earlier. Uh, evening, Corpio, how are you doing? I, this video was interesting. Uh, a lot more than the other, like, Jim Bros video, even though I, like, stopped watching it halfway through. Uh, and then got ba went back to it. Oh yeah, Magic Turtle wanted me to watch I this. Take what I am about to say here very seriously. Who is this, this Jay Ray? This is a responsibility that has been weighing on my shoulders for quite some time. Nobody else can do.
name uh, that you understand what Viable said, what is meant here? Viable is talking about creating uh, basically a transgender Olympics with a trans uh, men and a trans women categories for the Olympic sports. And basically, that was the same way you have a Paralympics, have a separate Olympics for, for transgender people. Um, and the problem with that, I mean, first off, the optics of comparing it to the Paralympics is, is weird. Um, but apart from that, uh, like having a different Olympics, um, well, I mean, there are several problems. I, I can already like, tell you what people will complain about con con concerning that. First off, being sidelined, uh, people, people tend to only look at the main event. They don't care about the, the other events. Uh, and secondly, about being othered further. Uh, it's it's a it's a very important point in the fight for trans rights that trans women are women and that trans men are men. Uh, if there's a distinction to be made, it should be between trans women and cis women or trans men and cis men. But women and men should encompass the whole populations. Um, that being said, the, and the other side of the argument is like, how do we how do we have trans women and cis women compete and trans men and cis men compete? in ways that are fair. And that is what we're trying to unpack here. Uh, it's complicated. Are short people also sidelined? Where do we draw the line? I mean, that's an argument for the, for the like fully inclusive uh, side of things, like abolish, like fuck it, man, abolish gender categories. The, it's, uh, the, it's already hugely unequal. In every category, there are specific body types that will always dominate. And no matter how hard you train, you'll be worse than that other person who has the 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 god tier body type, and that other person is the um, uh, and and whatever. Uh, so like the, um, the there's already unfairness. There are there's a fundamental unfairness in competition by the default anyways so like where where do you draw the line is a really important question absolutely it, like and ironically just focusing on one side of this issue is a bit weird if trans men cannot compete in the men's category then they're also effectively barred from competing that is absolutely true as well um sad, sadly what happens is that there is just way less trans men, right? Um, I, right, I'll, I'll address what you said, Corpio, because uh, we covered it. Um, just to say, I'll ca catch up here. The only fair thing to do is to make people compete in their birth gender, no exceptions. It would have a semblance of fairness, but it, it would be unfair. It would be unfair to. Um, it it would be uh, it would flip the unfairness around. Now you would have trans men competing with cis women, and that would be unfair for the cis women in many sports. And you would have uh, trans women competing with cis men, which would be unfair to the trans women by the same standards we apply to right now. So you would still have unfairness. No, I believe they're equal in prevalence, but trans women just get a shit ton more attention. I have to double check that. Why not rank based on performance, average approximated performance, where you rank based on performance, nothing by gender? That would be an interesting approach, yeah. Isn't the point, so the point of sports to be fair, not unfair, like you put it? Well, yes and no. Like, there are parts of, fair, of, uh, of unfairness that we accept. Uh, the article I, I linked earlier that we read on stream at the start of the stream uh, uh, brings up very interesting points. Uh, no, I'll, I'll repeat the stuff, Corpio, don't worry, that's the nature of a Twitch stream. Um, the, the article I was reading earlier brings up some very interesting points uh, about how, for example, some of the most celebrated athletes historically had genetic advantages, like, like rare mutations. And Michael Phelps, for example, produces half the lactic acid that, uh, that uh, people normally produce when his muscles uh, uh, exert themselves. So he, he literally gets tired half as fast as uh, as a normal human being like uh, is that fair i there is a perspective that would say that's maybe not so fair but you aren't going to put him in the category of his own and i, I I'm, I'm okay with it like uh, like okay he's he's got like the god tier genetic lottery 
Um, but it is what it is. Like it has to be acknowledged that uh, there there is an, some like n n unfair nature to it. You you can train just as much as Michael Phelps and even more, and he'll still be better than you. Is what I'm saying. I see the title says testosterone is not a measure of performance, but for trans men waiting to be women, um, well then in that case you mean men waiting like trans women, but yeah whatever. Do they not have to uh, take estrogen pills to lower the testosterone level to even have a chance of competing? So maybe the sporting people see testosterone as having an advantage against women, hence why they have to lower the level with estrogen pills. Yes. Uh, so the. Um, the uh, International Association of Athletics Federations and the International Olympic Committee have put hard limits on the amount of testosterone that women can have in their bloodstream. However, um, it seems, uh, from my research, it seems like those decisions are based on, if not, maybe bad science is too harsh, but uh, inaccurate science. Um, this doesn't mean that uh, that men are not advantaged in sports. It's just that uh, reducing it to testosterone is um, is very ha causes very big problems. Um, this article brings up a lot of very very interesting points and studies on the subject that explain why testosterone is not a good um, a, a good predictor for performance or by itself. Uh, testosterone most definitely does affect performance, but um, it's probably one of the smaller factors in, in the grand equation. I'll, I'll link it to you, Scorpio, if you want to go over it, or you can like watch the VOD. At the start of the stream, I, I, I read the entire article. But I'll, I'll, I'll really, really link it in chat anyways. There you go. Um, survey of 27,000 trans people all over the US, page 44, but this is 2015, maybe it has shifted. Oh. Um, can I see, like, demography? I just want to, like, skip to the dem demographics. Oh, page 44, you said. Okay. Page 44. Um... Guys versus guys and girls versus girls only? Well... The problem is guys versus guys and girls versus girls only means trans women against cis women because trans women are women too. Sorry, late into the convo. Don't worry about repeating yourself. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> Good one, sign. Also, boys have a pecker and girls have a pooty tang. It's it's actually more complicated than that. I, I I recommend you read that article as well, Scrub Lord. It's a very interesting one. Okay, I need to skip a bunch of uh, I need to skip a bunch of like stuff in chat. Tommy Liptards, lol. Okay. Um, so this is the table on page 44. So 65% uh, transgender. Oh, right. 32% were trans women and 31% trans men. Okay. All right. Let's see if we can find um, like more or higher, bigger data sets. Don't expect me to call a trans woman a woman. You don't understand what transness uh, means if you're saying that. Uh, race and ethnicity of adults who identify as transgender in the United States. Um, I don't know if I care about the race and ethnicity. 
Let's see, how many, June 2016, how many adults identify as transgender? 1.4 million adults identify as transgender. Um, Two thousand seventeen demographic characteristics of uh, and health status of transgender adults in select U.S. regions. All right, maybe I should look at the full report. Yo, Scrubler, you really should be taking uh, like a chill pill. We 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 can we can discuss. I I I don't have an issue with you with you dis discussing what you're talking about. I have an issue with how you're discussing it. Like, just be respectful, okay? I have an idea. Why don't we just get rid of all female, all male, all female sports, There's female teams in sports, and make them mixed and see how it goes? I don't think it will go well. I know women are, are better at some stuff and men are better at other stuff. It's not a fucking society thing that people keep saying these days. It's called genetics over thousands of years of evolution. No, there, there is such a thing as uh, sexual dimorphism. Uh, that, that is absolutely true. There are also societal aspects to it, but yeah. Um, transgender identified adults by age. Are there going to be a gen? Are there, is there going to be like gender? Nope. Okay, UCSF. Worldwide estimates for trans women are one in every 30,000 people. Trans men are estimated at one in every 100,000 people. However, these numbers are likely an underestimate because they only account for trans people diagnosed with gender identity disorder and or people rece receiving services at gender clinics. which we know are not inclusive of all trans people. And then there's a 2020 study, changing demographics in transgender individuals seeking hormonal therapy. Are trans women more common than trans men? The number of in individuals seeking sex hormone therapy for gender dysphoria has been increasing. The prevalence of gender dysphoria has recently been estimated as high as 390 to 460 per 100,000, with a consistently greater prevalence of trans women than trans men. We report here the changing demographics encountered in our experience over the past two decades. We collected data on individuals receiving hormonal therapy in the transgender clinic at Albany Medical Center in upstate New York from 1990 to 2017. We analyzed temporal changes in the number, age, and gender identity of transgender individuals. Through results, through June 9, uh, 2017, a total of 421 transgender individuals were seen who initiated hormonal therapy after 1990. Over the past 25 years, there has been a significant increase in the number of individuals seen. The mean age at initiation has remained higher in male to female than in female to male, but has decreased steadily in both groups, with the overall average dropping 30 years since 2015. Dropping to less than 30 years, sorry. Uh, to under 30 years. Uh, since 1990, there has been a steady increase in the percentage of female to male, such that it is now equivalent to male to female. Conclusion. Consistent with many reports, we are seeing an increasing number of gender dysphoric individuals seeking hormonal therapy. The age at initiation has been dropping over the past 25 years, and we have seen a steady increase in the number of female to male, such that the incidence now equals that of male to female. 
So historically, ah, we can we can look at some more um, some more data. But historically, it seems that uh, what she said, Nept, uh, or what she quoted, I I think maybe what you quote here. Um, I don't know, maybe there's like a selection bias here that explains that uh, the fact that there's equal uh, trans women and trans men for portions. But it seems like historically there's uh, there's been much more, uh, many more um, trans women than trans men. What have you found using hormone uh, replacement therapy? When does the percent kick in, as in one week, one month, or what time length? That would affect professional competitive sports. I have no idea about. I have no idea either. Uh, I I have yet to go into that part of the research that needs to be done. Yo, scrub lord. Must be that magical testosterone. So, Corpio, if you, uh, by the way, if you, if you check out the the article I linked to, you, uh, one of the scientists. Uh, so, there's a lot of arguments why testosterone is much less of a factor than people advance. Um, one of the scientists that's quoted here um, n talks about human growth hormone, for example, that is that will be uh, much uh, more prevalent. And many researchers now think it's factors on the Y chromosome that account for some of those differences. Holt's own research suggests that part of it might be growth hormone, which varies between men and women and plays important roles in muscle gain and repair, among other things. And both uh, what I linked to you and what you're linking now are saying that they're equal in incidence. The only thing that seems to differ is uh, one thing where they give an estimate where they admit is possibly off. No, uh, they, they're saying that the incidence uh, is now equal, but that uh, it has changed over 25 years. It, it, it originally was true that there was more, um, uh, more trans women, but, uh, but now it's, uh, it's, like, it's, um, e it's like equaled out, basically, is what the, the study is saying. And this is probably like old data then. Where it says that there's more uh, more trans women than trans men. Can you show a graph of the change, possibly? Yeah, I mean, we can try to check out the the actual uh, paper. Uh, we can't do it off of this website. Oh wait, free full text. There we go. We can. Methods, results. So new patients per year. So this is the rise of uh, incidence in general. The lowering of the age. Uh, okay. Scrublord, Sign is literally a mod. He gets to regulate speech. I trust him with regulating speech in my chat. Like, Jesus Christ. Hey man, you and Lauren Southern are on the same topic. Perhaps hosting her when you're done. Got a network, my dude? Oh, God. I I don't know if I feel comfortable platforming her. I, I would love to have a... I would love to, like, talk with her for clout. Unironically. But uh, I don't know if I could. Um... Oh, the, oh, what the, are we doing this? Are we doing this? We're watching Lauren Southern watch Hassan. Is that what we're doing, Kino? Is that what you're getting me to do? Okay, I, I, Nept asked me for some uh, graphs. Okay, I cannot find a graph of just the um, the g gender incidents. This is like age. <laughs> we live in a society. So this is about the age. Methods, introduction. Since 1990, there has been a steady increase. Oh, okay, there you go. This is the graph you were looking for, uh, Nept. This is the exact graph you were looking for, Nept. Figure three. Well, no, because it doesn't need the, the male to female graph, because this graph, uh, this graph is, uh, is in a percentage. So once, once this uh, hits 50%, 
it like it, when it's at 10%, it means 90% is male to female. So th this is exactly the graph you were looking for. It's interesting that it's linear. I, I, I find it, uh, it, it's interesting that it's linear. I would have expected it to be more like, um, more like an exponential curve. As the because the acceptance of um, of trans identities has really risen in more in the two thousands than in the nineties, and there's some outliers here like early on. I yeah, uh, actually, if you look at the data points, I don't like this line. I don't like this line at all. And there's outliers on both sides though. To be fair, yeah. Do you want the link, uh, Nept? For your future, uh, for your future debates, I have it. Okay. And to be fair, it's also only the um, the data from one clinic. But um, yeah, it's, it, it, seems, it seems to fit what we've been looking at. All right, what's slower in Southern Sane? Reviewing Destiny panel debate, trans athletes. Oh, is Des does Destiny have a debate on trans athleticism? Oh, God. Unfair advantage, simple as that. Well, it seems like a pretty complicated topic, honestly. But I mean, even when female to male was at 30%, they're still not so irrelevant that they shouldn't be talked about. Yeah, yeah, no, you're, you're right, Nept. They should be talked about, yeah. So the rebel that, oh, well, we don't talk about female to male because there's so few of them is just not an argument. Yeah, you're right. It, that was a bad uh, response. I will correct myself. Unfair advantage, simple as that. Uh, in, in what sense? I saw her on a, on a panel debating. Um. Yeah, me too. Where were we at, by the way? Oh, yeah, we were going to watch the gender chair list video. Do what I am about to do, and I'll explain why. The right wing thinks that there are only two genders. The left wing is anti-hierarchical, and so only me, only I, can put all of the centrist. into a Amazing. tier list format. Here's how we're gonna do things. I have a lot of flags. I don't know what all of them mean. In fact, I I know what uh, sort of none of them mean. But I have inspect element, and so it'll tell me over here what the name of the, of the flag is, and then we're going to cross-check it on the gender wiki. I can't even find male and female just picking it out, so I guess we're going to have to just go in order. Which one to start with? Let's pick up, let's pick something innocuous, huh? Let's pick something people would, you know, a good, a good, a good choice. Arson gender is a gender. The Ukraine war is less complicated than trans and the world of sports. It has so many ins and outs and I can't keep up and I try my best that I just give up and then... Honestly, yeah. <laughs> I agree. It's, it's more complicated. Uh, th this issue is more complicated than the Ukraine war. <laughs> I, I didn't think I, that was the comparison I was going to make. Uh, I think I agree. Wait a minute, are you hating on centrist, lol? Wait, what do you mean? Is that a chameleon or a rat? What are talking about Kino. Kino, you're like... Oh, I, I don't fucking know. Gender identity in which one doesn't connect with or believe in gender. You made a remark about centrist a few seconds ago, lol. Oh, yeah, enlightened centrist. No, it's an expression. Uh, the enlightened centrist is an expression in, um, in like, online politics. Um, it, it's like a satire of the person who, uh, who always... who is, like, always, like... People, oh, you were kidding. Okay, sorry. <laughs> you know what I meant. Uh, never mind. I was like, oh shit, now I have to explain the concept of the enlightened centrist. Feeling of wanting to burn it all down. That's pretty good. Just based off of my, the vibe that I get towards it. I'm going to put that on a, a, as an S. A for arson, yeah. You know, I'm thinking high A, low S. These ones will probably be the least controversial, so let's just knock them out, you know, right now, right here, man and woman. D tier. It's played out, man. Based. Woman. Played out. No what I want to see is cat gender. 
Yeah, that's right, cat gender. I'm not even gonna look this one up. I just know what's an S tier already. A gender. Based. Genderless cat gender is S tier. Gender. This is an F tier. Now, look. A gender is basically the apoliticism of gender. Well, you're just not gonna you're not gonna choose. You're not gonna play the game. F. F. Wow, that's harsh. Camilo I gender. I don't know now about that. Now we're onto something. Now we're onto something. Camilo gender. Gender associated with being a chameleon. Okay, okay, okay. Actually, no, it's not about being a chameleon. I don't. I think. I guess cat gender is your gender is associated with being a cat, but a camilo gender. It's not associated with being a chameleon, but it's the same mechanism of being a chameleon. It's a subtype of gender fluid. This is interesting. They have base genders, example, a gender, but it adapts the individuals around them. If you're around a bunch of people who make you feel comfortable as a woman, you will blend in like the chameleon and become a woman. I'm gonna put it in C for now. This is like the gender fluid tier, I guess. Jew gender, yes, Oh perhaps. shit, Jew gender, what? Wow. A lonit, a lonit, I don't know. A gender from Jewish culture where one was identified as a female at birth but develops male characteristics later in life. There are a lot what? of different Jewish words. I'm fucked up for right gender. now. Zakar, someone identified as male at birth, presenting it male later in life. So a cisgender man. Nikaiva, identified female as birth, presents as female later in life, cisgender woman. A lonit, that's where we are now. Identified as female at birth, but shows male characteristics later in life. It seems to me that this is basically just, this is the equivalent of a trans person. But I guess the difference is that there's a different tradition behind it. I'm going to put it in the same rank as I would put a male to female or female to male. Which I think would have to be, hmm, I guess the question is, hmm, a narco gender. Now we're talking! A narco gender is a gender with two definitions. The first definition is a non-binary gender characterized by a rejection of the gender binary and its social hierarchy. Okay, rejecting the gender binary but not the concept of gender, that's important. The second definition is that being an anarchist affects your perception of gender. It could also mean one's gender is just anarchy. And it... it... Um, the belief that one is trans should not eventually affect the life of another in this way. Those other uh, women trained, uh, cis women trained hard as hell and got beat by um, someone assigned male at birth. It's not fair. It's not equality. It's wanting everything your way. It's wanting the world to change for you. Toxic as hell. Well, the problem is you can turn it around the other way too. Like the... Um, uh, be, uh, being a trans woman... And being an athlete shouldn't make it impossible for you to to compete in uh, in the sports events. It's and that's not fair, and that's not equality, and that's not uh, acknowledging that a trans woman is a woman, uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, that being said, like the the problem is that uh, also fairness in sports is there's a bit more nuance than just. Uh, like men better than women or what, like what the um, athletic and uh, and olympic committees try to do with uh like testosterone levels etc hence, hence the stream title like the testosterone probably plays some role but a lot of studies seem to show that when it comes to endogenous testosterone testosterone that's naturally uh that the body is used to that's naturally produced in the body it has much less of an impact than people would want to, want it to have, um, which doesn't mean that there isn't a sexual dimorphism between men and women. It's just that it comes through in other factors. Um, testosterone doesn't seem to be the key to understanding the difference in performance between men and women. Um, that being said, there is a difference in performance between men and women, depending on the sports. Um, and it, it's a complicated subject when you when you acknowledge the validity of like a, tr a trans woman being a woman, because it's not really fair for the trans woman either. And there is a fair argument to be uh, brought up about how sports are fundamentally unfair, anyways.
uh, people have genetic and biological advantages and disadvantages that determine whether their careers are valid or not. There needs to be compromises, at least, though. They need a league of their own. They would still have the right to play professionally. Against each other would be fair, right? Against each other would be fair, as much as any sport is fair. Um, not, that the, not that sports actually are fair in like absolute terms like like i said that's also something that needs to be pointed out there is no there is no like absolute fairness in sports um a, a lot a lot of the world world record shattering sport uh, athletes are people who had unique biological advantages over the rest of the human population you you you, you can train as much as you want and be as insanely you can be like the the greatest athlete of all time and you'll probably never beat michael phelps at, at his own game because he has he's not only an amazing athlete he also has a huge genetic advantage uh thanks to his um thanks to his um uh, lactic acid production meme so like what is it unfair that you you can you can work twice as hard as Michael Phelps and never beat him? I don't know. That's RNG, but so is being trans. You you don't choose to be trans. Who said that's not fair? No one said it isn't fair, but there is a I think there is a point in bringing that up. When it comes to comparing it to, uh, w there is a point in bringing it up, in that uh, we, certain certain inequalities we consider are fair, and certain uh, we certain others we consider unfair. Dude, that's a bullshit argument, lol. I explain to me. What's the what's the fallacy there? It's it's not a perfect argument because there is. Even if you're, even if you don't choose to be trans, you're still choosing to undergo like hormone therapy, and we can go into the details where you can like control your hormone levels, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but the, the, those arguments are kind of weak. the the real The real issue is that I guess there is a whole category of people um, who would be advantaged or disadvantaged if we're talking about trans men. Uh, trans men will be disadvantaged competing against uh, cis men. But, um, yeah, like tr trans women get an advantage from all the time they spent uh, practicing and training as uh, before the transitioning. And, uh, and, some of us and all of some i don't know yet exactly how much but uh earlier we saw a video about powerlifting uh in powerlifting it seemed like they retained uh, something to like uh what was it like roughly 50 percent a bit less like 40 50 percent of their advantage compared to cis women they retained it through hormone therapy which is a huge advantage. Sports are very simple. You have a winner and a loser, but these days kids just get a bloody participation medal, not winner or loser. How do you get to such a low point? No, look, no, we're talking, we're, we're talking about fucking high level uh, athletics. We're not talking about kids getting participation medals. Also, also, did you know that rats, when they play with their children, they lose on purpose, uh, like one third or one fourth of the time? Uh, because they know that if they um, if they always win against their children, their children will, will get like depressed and demotivated. And it's it's not about bloody participation medals. It's also about, anyways. I don't know the whole like participation medal discourse annoys me. But I I, mean, I get what you're ta talking about. These kids, when they get to adulthood and get a job and get sacked because they don't perform, are you just going to give them a participation medal? Honestly. Um, people deserve to live, even if they're not good performers. But um, that's a whole other topic. Imp, my solution is to 
uh, put a freeze on trans uh, on trans people joining the competitive field until there are rules and prerequisites put in place. Just like I mean, there are prerequisites put in place right now, except they just are problematic. They they don't make sense when we look at the science. Just like biological, uh, like cis men and cis women have rules in the competitive sports. Do you think this all could be could be a solution? You are comparing a 1% genetics girl to a 1% genetics man? What? First off, I'm comparing, uh... No, I was talking about fucking Michael Phelps. Uh... So what you would be talking about... So I, like, I'm comparing a 1% genetics man to a 1% genetics trans woman? Even an average NBA player is better than the below average women's NBA player? Probably, yeah. In, uh, in like all conceivable metrics, yes. And uh, some part of it will be biological advantage. Um, and some part of it will also be socially learned. Probably for the most part biological advantage though. I'll, uh, like I, I don't have an issue with acknowledging that. But then it's a, it's a more complicated subject. How much of that advantage is retained through hormonal transition, for example? What, what, is, what does it mean to, be, to have an unfair or fair advantage as well? Honestly, I, I wouldn't mind if, sports, if a, a lot of sports were less gendered. But I also understand why they, like, they have to be. Like, are you going to start talking, for example, are you going to start saying, for example, that because in chess or in esports, um, women athletes perform much worse than men's athletes, there has to be, like, a biological reason for it, too? Not, not to deny that there is a biological component to, to, to like, sexual dimorphism. Um, obviously, there is that. But it's it also like every everyone de facto seems to dismiss the social component, which um, I think is a bit unfair as well. Which also, honestly, to be fair, the social component is another advantage that a trans woman will have over cis women, because a trans woman will have uh, started their training and their um, their experience with the sport in uh, in the actual in the actual. Um, context of the um, of men's training you're comparing the concept of whether it's fair to do boy versus girl to the concept of having a guy with average genetics to someone with amazing genetics that is a really stupid comparison why do you think why do you think that uh there is sexual dimorphism in the human species do, do you not think that has to do with the genetics as well Lol, yet another crazy leftist stream on Twitch. Gender doesn't determine biological sex. Gender is meaningless. Biological sex determines who plays what sport and what bathrooms people use. I, that, that's... Like, yes, gender doesn't determine biological sex. Uh, or rather, the assigned sex at birth is a more fair way of putting it. Uh, gender is not meaningless, though. And um, biological sex, first off, does not determine who plays what sport. Uh, you, you realize that a lot of uh, top-tier women athletes have XY chromosomes, by the way. And what bathrooms people use, that's just a dumb discussion. I'm not even going to address that one. Aren't on the same page or you're trolling me? The Michael Phelps argument is dumb. I, we're clearly not on the same page. I'm not trying to troll you. I'm genuinely just saying that there are inequalities in sport. Like my argument is, is just this: there are fundamental inequalities in in sports, whatever the categories you make. Okay, whether it's uh, it's uh, cis cis men uh, against only cis men, uh, cis men against trans men. All whatever categories you make, there will be inequalities. That's the nature of a competition. There will be some there there will be someone who dominates and someone who loses. And it will not be just because of training. There will be people who will train just as much or who 
train even less and they'll still dominate. And usually that's what people understand by fairness. It's the it's like how much you trained is the supposedly only like factor of fairness, but realistically speaking, that's just not what the reality. The only fair sport is when you compete against your own clone. Why aren't, or aren't people more upset over this? Yeah, so it's like, obviously it's not the same unfairness between um, like a trans woman competing with cis women than me competing with Michael Phelps. It's a different unfairness, but it is still an unfairness. So the reason I bring this up as an argument is because just saying something is unfair is not enough. You need to have a clear idea of where the line should be drawn if you want to propose a solution to this. That's that's my uh, that's my actual that's my actual uh, argument. So let's just add to the inference because it can, I, you wrote that before hearing what I just said. Like, what, what do you think of that? Like, there needs to be a clear line drawn on what is fair and what is unfair because it's not that simple as just saying something is unfair. There is always going to be some level of unfairness. Or rather, let me rephrase that. There needs to be a line drawn on what is acceptable unfairness, what is unacceptable unfairness. Even with doping, like earlier we, we listened to a really interesting uh, expose by someone um, in the powerlifting, uh, in powerlifting, who was, who was arguing for the, the issues with allowing trans women to compete with, uh, with cis women. And they, they brought up a lot of very good points. And amongst other things, um, what was I thinking about? Oh yeah, they, they, they brought up the unfairness of developing muscles before uh, and retaining them uh, through, through hormonal transition. But they also were very honest about it. They also are very honest about it in bringing up that that is what already what all powerlifters do with steroids, for example. They pump steroids then they build muscles, then they stop using steroids before the blood test, and they retain the muscles for the competition. And I really appreciate the honesty there. So, like, there is an accepted level of unfairness, which is that we can't stop people from using steroids uh, and retaining the muscles for the competition. And that guy acknowledged that. And I, I'm okay with that. Okay, so you, those are the lines you draw. And they, they informed their lines with studies where, okay, steroids, steroids according to their studies, gave a 10% advantage. Um, transitioning uh, gave a 10% disadvantage. Uh, but sexual dimorphism in their studies gave like a 60% uh, advantage. So in powerlifting, uh, it's, if we uh, plug all those numbers in, we end up with trans women being very, very, very advantaged compared to cis women. And they presented that as an argument for it being unfair. And like, I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. But it's not just like, boohoo, it's unfair. It's like an actual, they're actually looking at all the aspects of the, uh, all the steps of the issue. So should biological women use steroids to keep up with trans women? No, but because the trans women can use steroids too. <laughs> In fact, one of the issues he brought up, which was an interesting uh, point, was that one of the medications used for hormone treatment can mask the use of steroids or mask the use of, uh, of uh, performance enhancing drugs in general. So they, they actually have uh, trans women stop uh, their hor hormone therapy. Um, what was it, like two or three weeks before the blood test? Otherwise, their, their medication will mask the, um, uh, will mask the uh, doping and make it impossible to detect. Uh, by the way, the, the reason I don't use CIS because no sense to me at all. I've heard the reason behind the definition of the acronym. It's not an acronym. It's, uh, it's, from, the, or, or, it's from the Latin etymological root. CIS and trans are, uh, are opposing uh, prefixes in, in Latin. Uh, that's all, all it is. It's it's not an acronym. The the opposite of of a trans something is cis something, in in et etymologically speaking, in in like the Latin origins of the of the terms.
is identified to be up to the interpretation of whoever I'm going to refuse to use cisalpine gall now. Yeah, exactly. There is a transalpine and cisalpine, for example. Th those are those are two words and they they are opposite each other. Have say a totalitarian gender and can you be both? Can you be a gender superposition between anarcho gender and fascisto gender? Is this ANCOM's canon gender? All very good questions. Definitely good. Okay, it's like a political ideology plus a gender. I mean, that's strong. That's powerful. I'm gonna put it in S tier. I'm gonna put it in S tier. Crypt gender. Right, okay. So the crypt gender flag is this one, and it's an association with cryptids. Solitude, connection to the wilderness, disconnect from humanity, mystery, being undocumented. Xenogender, in which one identifies with or groups themselves with cryptids. This can be a standalone term or be paired with other terms such as crypt girl, crypt boy, etc. One may also be kin with a cryptid. Or this may be used as a kin gender identity. Oh, mm, yeah, A tier, A tier. Because it's And they have untested federations and tested federations and athletes with good coaches who know what they want to compete, what they want to compete in the correct uh, competition. Do they have untested federations? I, I wasn't familiar with that. When they want to go next level, they they pin. It's very transparent on the inside. It's all honesty and a lot of HFS. What is HFS? I, what the guy was describing earlier wasn't that transparent. It was people people using uh, steroids and then weaning themselves off before the blood test, so they looked uh, natty. So the blood test was natty, but they their performance was steroid enhanced. I I don't call that transparent. I would be loath to call that transparency. Xenogender. Xenogenders by nature are going to be S or A. I think. I mean, unless there's some really cringe... Xenogen. You know what, Magic Turtle? The IFBB is untested. What's that? International Federation of Bodybuilding and Fitness. Oh, but that's bodybuilding. That's not, like, weightlifting. I mean, that makes sense. They, dude, they, they would lose so many competitors if they were, if they were testing people. Oh, that would be impossible. Like, the, there's, there's no one not on steroids there, right? No, when I was asking, like, yo, are there untested federations? I was thinking, like, power, like, actual, okay, I'm going to be mean for the, for the bodybuilders, but, like, actual athletics. If you, if you, it, it, do you know what I mean? You can make positives out of being poor, for example, but we shouldn't want to wish people to be poor to gain those benefits. But that way you can still be a well-rounded, good human without necessarily going through forced hardship. My bad, bad. I thought you were talking about bodybuilding, bro. No, no, I was, I was talking about weightlifting earlier. I was talking about weightlifting. And not to throw shade at bodybuilding, like, I understand that bodybuilding is actually an athletic activity, but I, I was thinking about the, um, I, yeah, uh, powerlifting. It depends. IFBB bodybuilders are all juiced, of course, but in other categories, being natural is feasible. Okay. I don't know much about powerlifting. I'm sorry, Magic Turtle. I... I just realized this video is 36 minutes long, and it's uh, it's too much cringe for me, okay? I can't. Now, this was interesting, seeing that um, Leah Thomas would have scored uh, where, where, where she would have scored in 2018.